Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video I'll show you how to recreate this bouncing box animation and how to make it loop seamlessly in under 10 minutes. This is a useful exercise to understand better the physics and how to simulate them in your animations. I will focus more on motion than on the shading this time, but if you would like to know how I made these illustrated materials, let me know down in the comments below. So let's start by creating the scene where the box will be jumping down the steps. Using a cube of 500 cm on every side and two cloners, we can quickly create this scenario. Then we add another cube, which will be the subject of this animation. We don't want to start at the very top, because when adding a camera, the edges will get revealed. Instead, let's start 5 steps lower. My way of animating is adding one parameter at a time and building the animation by steps. So let's start with the Y parameter and key the first position on the 5th frame and the end position of the jump on the 40th frame. We start on the 5th frame so we can add a bounce later on. To make it jump, let's add a key on the 20th frame and drag it up on the graph editor. Now we just have to adjust the splines so the box jumps, lingers in midair and falls right after. With the Y axis done, it's time to add the X axis. Same as before, we key it on the 5th frame and the final position on the 40th. When animating, sometimes you don't have to keyframe everything manually. In this case, the box will be jumping down always at the same speed. So we can add a function to the Y axis and repeat it over time. To do so, select the keyframes you want to repeat and inside functions look for the track after. There we can go for offset repeat after. In this case, the ending keyframe will be the starting point for the next loop. Now it's time to add the set axis with the same steps we did before. In animation there is something called squash and stretch. This is a basic effect, but brings life and flexibility to the animation. If you're not familiar with the basics of animation, I would strongly recommend to look that out. To start with the squash effect, we have to add the scale parameter, keying it on the first and tenth frames with a value of 1, and on the middle point with a value lower than 1, so it squashes when hitting the step. We can loop this parameter as well, and to do that we have to key it on the 40th frame and make sure that the previous frame is on linear mode. This takes out any ease the spline may have. Select the frames again, and this time we go for repeat after. To accentuate even more the squash effect, I like adding a bulge deformer and keyframing it almost at the same frames as the scale parameter. This is a great way I found to add a more cartoonish feel. You can also use the squash and stretch deformer, but I found it way too complex for what I'm looking for in this animation. Sometimes simpler effects work just as well.
When adding a camera, it's important that the last frame of the animation is exactly the same as the first one, to get this illusion of a perfect loop. Now is the time when using 500cm cube for the scenario simplifies the math. So we keyframe the start position of the camera, and every step it has to move is 500cm. So we have to key it on the last frame, two steps on the x-axis, minus two steps on the z-axis, and minus four on the y-axis. In between steps, we can make this box do front flips and turns to make it more appealing. To do this, we have to add rotation parameters in the same way we did it with the position parameters. A final touch I like to add is a twist deformer to accentuate the rotation of the box when it spins. And this is how our bouncing loop animation looks like. You can apply this technique with any object and also in any direction. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you found it useful and learned new techniques from this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video, bye!